Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to take a photo like this one on the left and Photoshop it into a photo like this one on the right. So this is a photo that um, I just sort of made a few days ago. Um, there's probably still some areas that I can improve on it, but so far I'm quite happy with it. Um, basically, I just had the idea to shoot this Capri Sun and then take some photos of some, uh, some fruit and sort of throw it in here and make a fun, you know, little mock Capri Sun ad. Okay, so let me show you the, the setup here. So, um, this is just, the background doesn't really matter. Uh, I just had some blue poster board. Uh, and sort of this reflective plastic sheet uh, beneath it, but that really doesn't matter because we're cutting it out anyways. And then I had my gray cards in here um, so I can get perfect white balance because I was using these really, really warm tungsten lights. Um, so in Photoshop, to get perfect white balance, what you would do is you get your levels adjustment, add it to your photo, and then you go... Um, you can pick up these gray cards for like $5 on Amazon and then you select the middle eyedropper in the levels adjustment, uh, the gray point, and then you just click on gray and it's going to give you that perfect, um, perfect color. But I already did this in Lightroom and then I went a step further and slightly color graded it in Lightroom before I exported it. So we're going to start here. I uh, just did basic adjustments. One thing that you'll want to do is you want to leave your shadows pretty bright and your highlights low enough that you have some flexibility with how you edit it in Photoshop. So I, it's a relatively flat photo, uh, which is what you want for compositing in Photoshop or compositing in any software. And then I have some photos of uh, the fruit so just some random ones. They don't actually look that great in here, but they ended up looking pretty cool in the final photo. So, okay, let's start with this as our main layer, our main background. First thing I'm gonna do, hit Control or Command J, duplicate that layer. And I'm just gonna go in here, uh, hit W on your keyboard to bring up the Quick Select tool. And with Enhance Edge turned on, I'm just going to select my subject here. It works pretty well for this photo. Uh, it doesn't work well for every photo, so for some you know cases you might have to use a pen tool, which I use in a lot of my other tutorials. But as you can see, like that was like 10 seconds of work, and we basically already have a pretty great selection. So now let's just fine tune it real quick and set it as a mask. So when you hit W, the quick select tool, shortcut, you have a select and mask button up here on the top of your screen. Click that, it'll bring up this. Um, it shows you all the red is what's not selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit feather and I'm gonna feather this by, in this case, I'm gonna go about 0.8 pixels, I think, um, but you'll have to change that depending on what photo you're working on. And then I'm just going to shrink my selection just a little bit to be on the safe side. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. That's looking pretty good. We're actually going to add some motion blur to the top and bottom, so I don't care as much about that as just the how the sides look, the sides of the Capri Sun look. So now I'm just going to go down here to Output 2, and I'm going to say Output 2 Layer Mask, and then I'm going to click OK. And now we already have that cut out, so that's nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and put this layer, drag it into a folder, and I'll name the folder um, Capri Sun, I guess. And then I'll make another folder at the bottom. I'll call it BG for Background. Make a new layer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make my background. Uh, you could use a photo or something, but I just use like a gradient. So go to your gradient tool. And if you wanna change the colors, you can go in here and click on the swatches and change the colors. But mine's already set up with the colors that I want. 
And I'm just gonna draw with the radial gradient, make something that looks kind of good. I think I want something more like this. Sorry, I do have a blue light filter on right now. So this is the true color, but that doesn't matter too much. Okay, we'll just stay with that for now. Um, put my Capri Sun right in the middle there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and center it. Uh, like that. Okay, so we've got our background, got our Capri Sun. Now we got to add our fruit. Gotta add the fruit and then make another folder for the water FX. So again, quick select tool. Just gonna go in and paint. What I want to keep. And then we will go in at the select and mask button and the quick select tool options, feather it, and shrink our mask output to new layer with layer mask. Now I'm just going to drag this into my photo. We don't need that one anymore. Let's see what we have here. Okay, same here. Don't worry about these stickers. I should have fixed that on set, but I forgot. Well, we can fix that really easily in Photoshop. I'm gonna feather it and I'm gonna shrink my mask just a little. I'll put to the new layer with layer mask and then drag it. A few things that we need to do. One, we need to get our curves and levels adjustments looking much better for the fruit and for the Capri Sun. Um, we need to get all our water, we need to add some blurs you know, change the rotation of the fruit a little bit here and there. And then the water was from Action Essentials 2 by Video Copilot, but you could also just go to a free um, photo site like Pexels or um, Pixabay or something like that and get like a free photo of a water splash and drag that in here. And I'm gonna show you guys how to, how to add those. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna go hit Control L or Command L or Control M or Command M, bring up my curves. And I'm just going to correct my photos a bit here. The dodge tool is something we'll use a lot. I have my dodge tool set to midtones, exposure 15%. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit. Um, to get this looking good. And we're also going to use the dodge tool to create like some artificial lights in our scene. Um, for example, you know, I dodged certain sides of the lime and stuff just to make it look like there's light coming from down here, stuff like that. So next layer. Curves adjustment. Bring up the brightness. Something like that. For, uh, for the stickers, what we can do is just select, let's see, I'll probably go in with the patch tool actually, and I'll just select around where the sticker is, and then drag it over and fix that. Now we're going to be blurring a lot of these fruits. They'll be like flying through the air. 
So that's another reason that we don't actually have to be like extremely precise and get everything perfect, but we do want to get everything looking generally pretty good. Okay, let's move on to the next layer. I'm using the patch tool, which is up here. And we'll also be using the spot healing brush tool a lot. Okay, next layer. Just gonna use the pen tool and make a nice soft um, curve here. Something like that. Hit selection. I'm gonna put my feather on like three pixels maybe. Go in here with the black color and uh, hit Control Shift I or Command Shift I to inverse my selection and then go in and paint and then I'll switch to white and I'll go in and I'll paint the inside to make sure that's all filled. I'm just going to grab the lasso tool or uh, the ellipse tool. Hit V. And, oh, I need to apply my layer mask, don't I? Apply layer mask. Yep, yep, okay, that'll make this quicker. Now I can go in here, hit V, and just move my fruit around. Put this line. Okay, so now we're gonna decide where our lights are going to be. So it's going to be helpful if we can um, sort of decide where our lights are in this imaginary scene. And then based off of that, we can sort of paint on our objects here and get them to look um, consistent. Like all, you know, there's a light here and here, for example. So I'm just going to decide that I have a light over here shining this way. I have a light up here shining this way. And that way. By the way, I just did that on a separate layer. It's a nice little guide to have. I used to do that when I was making concept art. So this way we will remember where we want our lights to come from. So you'll notice that I rotated this line so it has some highlights here and some highlights here. Uh, we can do the same thing with this one. Uh, we can make, can rotate it like that. It's actually the same line, but flipped on the table, I think. And we can make it look like there's a, a warm light down here and a, a blue light up here. Control T, transform. And then rotate it so it sort of matches the scene and then we'll just throw it uh throw it wherever probably shrink it uh, probably throw it up there somewhere might even copy and paste this or for example could copy and paste this one Move it over here, shrink it down, and rotate it. Nobody's the wiser. I'm rotating these so the shadows make a little bit more sense based on where we're saying our lights are supposed to be. So now we have some more. Go to the dodge tool. Actually, we'll go ahead and move them first. So I'm going to hit M to bring up my uh, elliptical marquee tool. Click and drag, hit V 
bring up the arrow tool and then I'll just move this over. This looks right about there. Now we can go in with the dodge tool and brighten up the midtones where we see fit. So it makes sense brightening up those sides and brighten this up, brighten that up. So it makes sense with our scene. Now this is not looking that good. So I'm gonna go in here again with the pen tool and just fix that weird uh, weird area there. Just delete it. I'm gonna move it in a little bit. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Like that's getting a little cramped. So I'm just gonna do this. So you can make this look really random, like I did in my first, um, my original photo, or you can make it look more um, sort of, uh, I don't know, more patterned. So I had these images, which were actually videos taken from Action Essentials 2 from Video Copilot, which is like a video uh, a pack of videos for visual effects compositing, but it could be used in Photoshop too. And then I just dragged them into Photoshop, moved them around, uh, sort of took uh, freeze frames from them, rasterized the layer, set the layers to lighten, um, and you know, just basically transformed them and warped them. Another thing you can do is you can go to Pexels or something, a free uh, stock image site, and then just get some splashes that look like they make sense. Set them to lighten um, if they're on a black background and they will blend just like this and look pretty good. Um, but what I did is I went into Action Essentials and I just loaded in uh, a bunch of QuickTime videos of water. And this is sort of a process, but basically what I do I just set up my timeline like this, throw a new layer that's black on the bottom so I can see the water, and then just scroll to a nice freeze frame, like right here, for example, and then rasterize the layer, and then I'll just drag it over into my image here, and uh, you know, throw it in water VFX, uh, set the water FX. Uh, folder to lighten, which will help everything to just look a little bit better. And then just transform this layer, control T, just get it looking good. I might make a mask on the layer and start painting with black, and then just line it up. Control or Command J to duplicate it. Uh, let's see, I could go over here and scale it down and use it for the fruit. So I could put it behind this lime or above the lime and then just go in here and paint on the mask. and make sure that it's looking pretty good as far as blending goes. You could duplicate that layer again, bring it over here, scale it up, you know, throw it underneath everything.
So here's another good one, another good splash I found. Which, I mean, this just looks so awesome. Shout out to Video Copilot, by the way, for putting such a good pack of stuff on the internet for not that much money, relatively. So for something like this, I might duplicate it. Ooh, that's looking real cool. Might duplicate it, merge my two layers, duplicate it again. I'll move it over here. And then let's get it lined up. I'll go to free transform and then I'll go to warp and I'll just drag it over to make it line up right. So it looks like the Capri Sun is like flying through the water or something and it's forming this like trail of droplets. That's really what's gonna sell this effect is really taking your time with it, making it look cool like this. And then I'll just go in here. I'll hit the mask button down here at the bottom of my layers panel. And then I'll hit B to bring out the brush tool. Hit the right bracket to make my brush tool larger. And then I will just go in and paint until it looks right. Okay, one thing I can do is if I have this layer set to lighten or whatever, which does make it look better, I can hit Control or Command M, bring up curves, and I can bring down my curves and add a little bit of contrast as well. And it's going to make it so that only more specific droplets get through. So as before you had this mist, now after curves it's only showing like more specific areas. So if you want a cleaner look, you can do something like this, drop the curves down on a layer that you have set to lighten, and now you have a more clean um, sort of mask of this water so do what you will with that knowledge. I could also drag this below my Capri Sun layers and that's going to give me a nice clean edge here and it'll make it look like it's behind the Capri Sun. So if you want that look, that's very simple to do. So I might make, for example, well, let's close this timeline, it's getting in my way. I might make, for example, another folder down here and call it water bottom. And that will be all of my water that's below my other layers. So that'll go down there. And I might make like all of my water blue, for example, my water uh, layers, just so I can remember. And then I'll make my fruit like orange or something. Then I'll make my Capri Sun green or something, just so I can organize my layers. I'm just right clicking and selecting a color, by the way. And you can do that on layers, and you can do that on folders. Just gotta randomize this stuff. It's a way to do it. And then I might make it uh, do it like that. I'll right click on it, hit warp, and then I can drag it to make it really match my uh, my layer here. Hit enter, hit the mask button on the bottom of the layers palette, uh, hit B to bring up the brush tool, and go in and paint with black to remove the areas that I don't want. And then I might just go in here with levels, whoops, not on the mask, on the layer, go in here with levels, control L, command L, and just darken it down like that. I'll set my layer to lighten. And now we have a really nice clean layer. I'm gonna duplicate it to make it a bit brighter. Now we have a really nice clean layer of water. I think I'll go in here and sort of paint out that area. You might be realizing that 
this photo is not actually that difficult to create. It just takes a lot of time. Um, one thing we haven't touched on yet is motion blur. So I decided to add blurs and motion blurs to make the fruit look like it's flying through the air. I wanted it all flying the same direction, so I'll just do it uh, same as I did last time. Let's say, I don't know, I can just combine my fruit layers now. Right click, merge layers. And then I can, if I wanted to motion blur them all equally, I can do that, or I can select them with the ellipse tool, you know, and just blur them a little bit differently if they're flying in different directions. Let's say I want them to all fly in the same direction. I'm just gonna select my fruit layer, go up to filter, hit blur, go down to motion blur, and then choose the angle that I want the blur at. I'm gonna put it as the same angle as my Capri Sun just to make things look cohesive and then decide how blurry you want it. So blurriness is the distance slider down here. And I think I'll put mine at, um, I don't know, maybe 20. Oh, one thing I did, one little trick that I did to make it look blurry but also detailed at the same time is I duplicated my fruit layer and I blurred um, I blurred the layer on the bottom. So we'll just blur it like, I don't know, 30 pixels or whatever. And then I went back up to my top layer that was um, not blurred, hit Alt, hold down Alt, and hit the mask button to make an inverted mask. And now I'm gonna go in with a white brush and I'm just going to paint back in the areas that I want to look detailed. So like I'm going to paint in the center of the fruits, for example, and that way I can still get some really cool detail. I'm painting at like 50% opacity right now. So I'm just gonna paint the center. That way I get detail on like the center of my fruits. And um, whoops. And they still look like they're flying through the air because the edges are blurred. So that's something that I don't really do very often, but in this case, it looked pretty cool. It's not realistic, but I mean, who really cares? We're making an image of a Capri Sun flying through the air. I think we can get away with a little bit of silliness. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna go to my background and brighten it up with levels, just because I want this to be a really bright, fun photo. So something like that is pretty fun. And if I want to change the color, make it more teal, I could totally do that. And I will. So, okay. We also need to correct the uh, Capri Sun itself, the color on it. And we need to add some blur to it. So the Capri Sun, I did the same technique as the fruit. I duplicated it and then I blurred um, one of the layers. So we'll just say, actually, I'm going to go ahead and apply the layer mask and then hit the motion blur. And I'll just use the same motion blur as a fruit. Um, and for this, I'll hit Alt, hit my mask, and then I'll just paint with white to reveal the layer. And I'm just going to paint like the areas that I want to be blurry. So I'm actually going to, going to paint all around the edges, I think. Uh, and you could also do this more procedurally, but uh, we'll ignore that <laughs> for right now. And then you'll notice that there's a little bit of a problem. The layer on the bottom is showing through and it's making it look crisp around the edges and we want it to look blurry, right? So what we can do is go in here and paint with black around the edges of our clear layer or not our, you know, sharp layer just to remove them, remove that layer from the edges. So it looks a bit more blurry. I mean, this is a super quick process. I mean, I'm doing this in real time for you guys. It's really not taking long. And then I'm just gonna go back in and fix. 
areas that might have a hole or two in them. So anything that's not necessary can get blurred. One thing you want to keep in mind is for a product shoot, you want, if you're doing this for a company, the company is going to want their branding to be extremely clear. So one thing that I can do on my Capri Sun layer is I can go in here with the dodge tool and the burn tool to sort of brighten up the text and darken the areas around it. So dodge tool, set it to highlights, and I'll just, uh, whoops, way too bright, way too bright. I'll set the exposure to like 4% and then just go in here and brighten up those whites. And I'll do the same to the fruit punch text down here. And then I'll switch, I'll go to the burn tool, go to shadows, whoops. Let's see how the burn tool works. Yeah, burn tool is gonna be good with shadows. Sometimes we might use midtones for this. And I'll go in at like, uh, we'll do 15% exposure and I'm just going to burn the areas around the text to darken those up so that it's more punchy, more contrasty. Fruit punch, punchy, get it? And you can see that a bit better. So if we look at sort of a before and after, we have this to this. So if we zoom out, actually makes it a lot easier to see. And we could even brighten up the rest of this too. Can go 3% on the dodge tool. We can brighten up the rest of the label. I just don't want to draw the attention away from the Capri Sun text because that's arguably the most important part of the photo from a business perspective, right? You gotta think about these things like a client. So we have a couple things missing. One thing that I did in my original photo with my fruit is I actually put some fruit close to the camera or further away like this one back here and I blurred it. The way that I do that is very simple. And I'm gonna hit filter, blur, or no, filter, blur gallery, field blur, and just increase it. So if we look at our before and after, just blurring it a little bit, I can make this, I don't know, scale this up, rotate it or something. And then this will look like it's closer to the camera now because it's so blurry. Just throw that in the corner there. And uh, you know, you can do that with anything. You could duplicate it again, rotate it, scale it way down and then blur it even more. Lower the opacity a bit and just throw it in the background like that. So you get the idea. Uh, another thing I did in my original photo is I added a lot of water sort of everywhere. So let's see if we can make that happen. I'm going to scale this way up so it covers like the whole image. And then we will set that to lighten and we will brighten it up. I'm just going to duplicate it and merge my layers. Okay, something like that is pretty cool. And then we can go into curves. Mess around with it. We can go into filter, blur, motion blur, and give this water a motion blur. Since it's low resolution anyways, we don't really want to reveal how low res it is. So I'm just gonna blur it a ton and wait on it. I wanna see what this looks like below the Capri Sun. So that's kind of cool. So I might do one layer like that and duplicate it again. Throw it on top of everything. Let's see. 
something like that. Cool. That's looking pretty. That's actually looking very fun. So, you know, there, there's a lot of ways to go about doing something like this. Let's say that we wanted to reveal the Capri Sun a little bit better. What we can do? Well, one, the easy solution is just to drag it to the top, right? Um, and then it will be on top of the water and everything. Um, another thing we can do is we can go into this specific water layer, hit the mask button, and then go in with the brush, set it to black, and then go in and paint out um, our Capri Sun. We want to show more detail. And this way I'm leaving a little bit along the edges, which helps to blend it. So if we look at that, let's see, let's go to before and after. So we can just paint it, paint it back, right? Just like that. So now this water layer is only affecting, it's sort of on top of everything else. Um, another thing we have to tackle is um, color correction, which it might be easier to do that separately for the fruit and separately for the Capri Sun. So I can go above my fruit uh, folder, go to my adjustments panel, hit, I don't know, something like hue saturation. And then I'll hit this button right here to make it only affect the layers below it. And then I can pump up the saturation, make everything look really colorful. We'll do like plus 18. So if I turn that on and off, that's looking a lot better. Um, another thing. Layer four. We need to correct this line because it's looking kind of ugly. Okay, that's better. One thing that we can do is randomize the blurs because we only blurred like two of these fruit. So I can go in here, since I don't really like this one anyways, I can select that and go up to um, Blur Gallery, Field Blur. And then just blur that. Oh, I'll need a bigger selection. Now I can go up to Blur. Gallery, field blur. Just crank that up a bit. Hit OK. Select this one up here. Do the same thing. Ooh, that's a cool effect. I like that. Okay. Where's. What am I looking at here? Layer 4 copy. That needs to go. Need to paint that out. You don't need that much detail. Again, think about the motivation behind a photo like this. Let's say it's a product shoot. We want to show the most detail in the product itself, which is this packaging. And all the fruit are just supporting elements. So we don't want any of the fruit to necessarily be brighter or more eye catching than the product itself, right? Uh, let's see, I think we need a little bit more water. And then I can use this for stuff like, I don't know, oh, it's duplicated again. Like, for example, I can use this down here on uh, this lemon. So I can hit alt click on the mask button down there in the layers panel bring up the brush and then just paint in the areas that i want and then select my layer itself hit control or command l to bring up levels and then drag the slider to the right Go ahead and duplicate my layer and merge it. Paint the mask a little bit. So we get a little bit of water above the lemon. And that way it's sort of 
a softer blend. This isn't perfect, but. You get the idea. This is really fun. One of the most fun things to do in Photoshop, I think. I think. Cool, that's looking pretty good. What about this one? What am I looking at? Here we go. You still need to work on this one. So I think I want to give a little bit more life to the Capri Sun. So I might add, I might add this again. Actually, what I'm going to do is flip it this time. Control T, right click, flip horizontal, rotate, throw it over here, hit warp. Move it down, control T, right click, choose warp. What if I throw it there? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Set it to lighten and I'll duplicate it once or twice. Right click, merge layers. Set those to lighten. And of course we can add motion blur. We can still add more motion blur to these water layers. I think what I'll do to blend this water layer is I will select the bottom half of it, go up to select and mask, feather it like so, hit OK, bring up my curves, Controller Command M, I'll drag the bottom of the curves way down until it starts to blend. Hit OK. Then deselect, hit the mask button, and paint the, the bottom out. So it's a much softer fade than if we were to just mask it because we're able to isolate the droplets and sort of get rid of that mist with this method. One way you can do color grading that's non-destructive, go up to the top, make a folder, call it CG for color grading, and then we'll just add, throw in a curves layer and go back to the adjustments panel and we'll throw in vibrance and we'll throw in color balance, for example, and just change the colors in here and then you can always uh, double click and go back and change them and it's it's not going to hurt anything it's just temporary so you can do whatever you want and um, not worry about you know destroying the quality or the colors of your photo so for this one I think I want lots of cyan lots of blue and some green the midtones to make it more teal then the highlights, I might make it more yellow, um, to brighten it up, make it look like a sunny day. Also, I'm going to add some more cyan. Um, let me turn off my filter here. Okay, go to my curves. and get the contrast just right. And this part is more subjective. You do you. I kind of like how that's looking. And then I can go on my vibrance and if I just want to make it quick, you know, saturation boost or vibrance boost, or whatever, I can do it through there. If I wanted to specifically boost a color, I would just throw in a hue saturation adjustment and then click on master and change it to whatever color, let's say green, and then pump up the greens. And that will give my lines a little bit more life. And we can do the same to the yellows. 
Whoa, getting crazy. Cool. And now we can turn off and on color grading all at once. So that's pretty fun. So, guys, thank you for watching this super long tutorial today. I hope that uh, you learned something useful. If you did, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm pumping out new tutorials like multiple times a week right now. Um, so you don't want to miss the next one because they're just going to keep getting better and better. So thank you guys for watching. Peace. See you next time.